If you live in a big city, you're missing out on a great spectacle that's put on every single night. Light pollution prevents us from seeing most of the beauty and mysteries of the night sky. But if you get far away enough from cities, you'll get to see a show that's been enjoyed by humanity since we were able to comprehend it all. Falling stars, flickering lights, comets, all immersed in a vast and complete darkness. But what exactly are the things you see on the night sky? Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. When you look up at the stars, you cannot help yourself to gaze and wonder. And so did our ancestors. Some of the first things they noticed were some strangely arranged stars that seemed to form certain shapes. Are these messages from the gods? We named them constellations and we use them for our own purposes. One of the least talked about constellations today is also the smallest of all 88 modern constellations, Crooks, more commonly known as the Southern Cross. This is the main attraction of the night sky if you are south of the equator. Its longitudinal axis points to the geographic south pole of Earth, so it's been a great tool for navigators. In the southern hemisphere, the night sky looks different from the north. There are no bright stars here to point to the north or south, but nevertheless people have found their markers. Centaurus is a more mighty southern constellation that in the eyes of the ancients lined out the shape of a centaur. This is an important constellation, it contains the star Alpha Centauri, one of the brightest stars in the night sky and the closest one to us. In the northern hemisphere, the easiest to spot constellations are Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, the great and small bears. Together, they helped northern explorers to navigate the globe. With them, you can find the star Polaris, which indicates the geographic North Pole. Constellations are of course not real shapes, the stars within them are not in one cluster, but can be thousands or even millions of light years apart. These shapes are only apparent to us, from here, our own planet and our own imagination. Stars are mostly what light up the night sky, some more than others. The sun is a star and it of course outshines everything at least here, in our own solar system. But the other stars, they shine just as brightly or even brighter. It's just that they are so far away that all we get to see are infinitesimal dots of light. The brightest of them, from Earth, is called Sirius. It's not the biggest star we know of, nor is it the most energetic, but it is the brightest. At a distance of about 8.6 light years, Sirius is one of our closest neighbors. And it's bright, about 25 times brighter than our own sun. And it's also getting closer. Sirius is gradually moving closer to the solar system, so it will slightly increase in brightness over the next 60,000 years. After that time, its distance will begin to increase, and it will become fainter and fainter but it will continue to be the brightest star in the night sky for the next 210,000 years. Sometimes you get to see something that's even more brighter, quasars. These objects are incredibly far away, way outside our galaxy, so they might be hard to spot with the naked eye. Grab a telescope though and you get to see it in its full glory. Quasars, or quasi-stellar objects, are extremely active cores of galaxies. The supermassive black hole at the center of such a galaxy, with mass ranging from millions to billions of times the mass of the Sun, is surrounded by a gaseous accretion disk. As gas in the disk falls towards the black hole, energy is released in the form of electromagnetic radiation, light. The power radiated by quasars is enormous. The most powerful quasars have luminosities thousands of times greater than an entire galaxy of hundreds of billions of stars. These are the brightest objects in the known universe and are frighteningly beautiful. Before we continue, I'd like to ask you one thing. 
This channel has no sponsors, so if you enjoy the content I make, please consider supporting these videos by becoming a patron. You can check out my Patreon page by clicking here or find the link in the description. Now let's move on to the next fact. Back here on Earth, sometimes you get to enjoy a stellar firework on the night sky – falling stars. In August, hundreds of falling stars gently ignite the sky as Earth passes through the remains left behind by the swift turtle comet. We call them the Perseids, as they appear to fall from the Perseus constellation. But this is actually what falling stars are – small space rocks or meteors that burn up in our atmosphere. Many, if not most, come from passing comets. These comets are nothing more than giant boulders of rock and ice, remnants left behind from the formation of our solar system some 5 billion years ago. Billions of them are on the far edge of the solar system, way behind Pluto. When they get close to the Sun, they heat up and release gases, rocks and pebbles, thus creating their familiar tails. Probably the most famous of them all is Halley's Comet. Edmund Halley was the first to discover that comets actually orbit the Sun and periodically return to our night sky. He calculated that in 1704 such a comet passed the Earth and it would return 76 years later. Halley died before the comet indeed returned, but sure enough, in 1758 Halley's Comet reappeared on the night sky. A much rarer visitor is the Hale-Bopp comet. This was perhaps the most widely observed comet of the 20th century and one of the brightest seen for many decades. The last ones to see this comet were the ancient Egyptians and the next time we or someone is going to see it again will be in the year 4385. Sometimes comets can wreak havoc, even on some of the biggest objects in our solar system. In 1993, three astronomers, Eugene and Caroline Shoemaker and David Levy, discovered the Shoemaker-Levy 9 comet. They had no idea what they had just discovered. The comet was on a collision course with Jupiter. The impact was the most cataclysmic explosion ever witnessed by humans. The comet actually broke into several fragments as it was pulled apart by Jupiter's powerful gravity. The energy of the impact was equivalent to 6 million megatons of TNT, which is 600 times the world's entire nuclear arsenal. The prominent scars from the impact were more easily visible than the Great Red Spot and persisted for many months. Another great spectacle we get to enjoy quite often is a lunar eclipse. Approximately every 6 months, Earth's shadow partially darkens the surface of the Moon. But from time to time, Earth's shadow plunges the Moon entirely into darkness. A lunar eclipse occurs when the Moon passes directly behind Earth and into its shadow. When this happens, the Moon can appear reddish, often called a blood moon. This is because at that moment, the only light reaching the Moon is the one refracted by Earth's atmosphere, which is now scattered and redshifted. Unlike a total solar eclipse, a total lunar eclipse can last up to nearly two hours due to Earth's much larger size and shadow. By far, the greatest thing the night sky has to offer is also the first thing to go in a well-lit city, our own Milky Way galaxy. Outside cities, on dark and clear nights, our galaxy looks like a strip of mist littered with some two to four hundred billion stars. From here, it looks like a milky strip in the night sky, which is why the ancient Greeks called it Galaxias Kyklos, or Milky Circle. Our galaxy is 200,000 light years in diameter. One light year is the distance light covers in one year, about 9.46 trillion kilometers, which is quite literally unimaginable for us. Until the early 1920s, most astronomers thought that the Milky Way contained all the stars in the universe. Boy, were we wrong! Nowadays, it is estimated that there are about 2 trillion galaxies in the observable universe, all containing from a few hundred million up to 100 trillion stars. 
you cannot overestimate just how epic our universe is, or just how tiny and insignificant we and everything we do are. So take a moment, relax, and enjoy your brief time under our wonderful sky. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you wanna support me. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.